again all friends uh, to our third series of a very important topic today i mean nowadays about tasawuf about uh, spirituality about uh, cleanliness of our heart uh, this uh, i mean in this uh, what they call it uh, i don't want to call it inhuman inhuman world but we can't touch everybody now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can only yeah. smile. We can, we can we can hug. We can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, so the, we are feel more isolated. <laughs> yes, yes. So we need a very strong uh, uh, internal uh, spiritual commitment. Inshallah. Inshallah. So last week, Prof uh, talked about four main issues: uh, Islamic spirituality. Yeah. Psychology of submission, mm. submission as fitra, and finally, Prof talk about ihsan is the pinnacle of Islamic spirituality. Yeah. So yeah. we don't forget to invite Prof. Thank you very much, Brother Shahran, for this very noble effort. Insha Allah, uh, will be uh, rewarded by Allah, and uh, may Allah grant us uh, blessing in this uh, event. Insha Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي يا yes as we said just now talking about the issue of spirituality is very tough because of the nature of the subject itself And I myself, uh, I, I'm not actually in real. I'm, I'm very daring actually uh, when dealing uh, and uh, uh, because of taking the challenge uh, uh, to talk about this issue, uh, simply because my interest, my interest since uh, some times ago about uh, emotional intelligence, and then there is after that emotional intelligence developed in the. Middle 90s, and then after that, we find spiritual intelligence from Western world because I'm, I'm my studying is um, is very much connected or related to uh, modern psychology, positive psychology. Uh, I'm doing Islamic studies. I'm in Islamic studies, but uh, I think today uh, to address uh, human humanity issues in our contemporary time, we need to have sort of exposure or knowledge uh, from uh, Western uh, world, uh, i.e. Uh, uh, Western psychology or modern psychology that really uh, uh, progressing. Uh, for example, we have positive psychology and they are interrelated with this concept of emotional intelligence and uh, latest is uh, spiritual intelligence, yeah. So the, the the spirituality spirituality is uh, is given uh, main attention it seems in in uh, in in uh, in the West yeah it's very strange uh, and of course in Muslim world I mean this is our essence of a religion I mean, without knowledge or without uh, experience in spirituality actually there is no substance yeah so but in the spiritual world because of uh, it is very strange. Uh, this phenomena is new phenomena that effort that many people um, uh, make effort or really concentric uh, focus their research their articles writing uh, uh, conferences academic uh, academic um, uh, activities uh, focusing on spiritual intelligence yeah so uh, to me i mean as 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 an As an academician, I feel that um, we uh, sort of, you know, this, uh, this is a, like a challenge that we have to respond um, uh, to uh, what is our perspective, um, what is our uh, what is our response in in this uh, uh, in this uh, issue? Yeah, uh, Islamic. Uh, Uh, how how do we um, how do we uh, deal with it? Yeah. So how do we respond? Uh, we have so we have our job. Uh, I mean, intellectually, we have to respond to whatever comes to us because uh, uh, spiritual intelligence 
is is actually uh, there are so many a lot of neg- uh, not a lot of positive uh, uh, contribution uh, to the to the whole world or to to humanity as a whole. Yeah. So my outline, as you can see here, uh, discussing uh, as a response to or, or how do we deal with this, uh, spiritual intelligence. So the concept, uh, the topic is as written. Uh, uh, on the slide, the concept of Islamic spiritual intelligence. In the beginning, I feel very, uh, I feel afraid, or I feel sort of, you know, um, uh, uh, hesitate, yani, uh, to 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 write Islamic spiritual intelligence. But but as uh, I read more and more on this issue, I feel there are things in spiritual intelligence that we can. We can, uh, or they go in line with our norm, with our worldview, and and uh, there there is there are some good in it, yeah. So, but of course, as a Muslim, we have to be critical. I mean, when we deal with anything we take from the West or from the, anywhere, we have to be critical because these these are things that that can shape our worldview, our aqida. And uh, then and leads uh, uh, and and it can become uh, good guidance for our life. Yeah. So I will start with uh, our to- our uh, what do you call this uh, outlines of our presentation today. Uh, we speak a little bit about secularized sp- spirituality. One of our brother uh, last week uh, was asking me or suggesting uh, uh, to me that. Uh, spirituality in the West has been secularized because of the uh, uh, because of the positivism or because of Western ideology today, which are uh, which are very uh, secular in approach. Yeah, um, uh, and then uh, I, I have a spiritual uh, spiritual intelligence in Islam, and I will speak about foundation of spiritual. Intelligence in Islam, uh, and then I go to the the the, the body of or, or the or or the heart of discussion of spiritual intelligence, which is spiritual heart, not physical heart. Yeah, and then uh, some indicators of spiritual intelligence in Islam, and the last one is about how to sustain spiritual intelligence. Yeah, so this is basically. Uh, uh, my um, uh, outlines uh, uh, tonight, yeah, presentation tonight. Yeah. Uh, as I said in the introduction, spirituality in in general uh, viewed as an innate human needs to connect with something larger than ourselves or higher than ourselves. Yeah. I mean, not not something physical, not something uh, uh, material. Yeah, and also it's about when when we speak about something uh, innate in ourselves and there's something uh, above ourselves. So it is actually about the growth of human being. Yeah, uh, it is about moving on in life. It is about direction in life and being able to heal ourselves uh, from all difficulties, uh, um, suffering that we have. Uh, like uh, we speak about today, um, uh, issue uh, like um, uh, in 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 psychology they bring this, uh, they always mention this uh, issue of adjustment, issue of coping mechanism, issue of uh, what else? Adjustment, coping mechanism, resilience, all this. Yeah. So all these are new actually. Uh, uh, re, uh, that uh, uh, in 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 because we because the nature of the world is 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 so difficult. It is in need to have uh, in in make people struggle to find way out. <laughs> yeah, and, and also it's an expression of higher reali- reality. Yeah, it's not only about human being. It's not only about material. It's not only about physical body. But it's about higher reality, and it is also 
about how we look at the resources available to us. And also the uh, people who propagate um, uh, or the consciousness of this uh, spiritual intelligence speak about, uh, uh, about the, uh, the heart that is materialistic or the focus on materialistic in this world will make us suffer. So this is for the first time for, for, for many, many years, Western world speak uh, or see this life, modern life in this manner. Yeah. And also they speak about uh, ability to exercise goodness, truth, beauty, and compassion in our life. Uh, that's why we have terminology like uh, um, empathy, uh, all this uh, uh, emotional uh, approach, uh, loving, kind, uh, which is more in the West now, even more in the West. No? I mean, even in our Muslim countries, we find that people are not that friendly. People are less uh, patient. People are less, uh, no, no compassion, actually no empathy. No, very. Uh, I don't say no, but uh, lack of empathy, lack of understanding of uh, interpersonal relationship, intrapersonal relationship. Uh, but people in, in Western society, they are, they are really, uh, they really work on it, and they really serious when they speak about uh, skills in interpersonal relationship. Yeah. And in fact, we learn from them a lot. And uh, spiritual intelligence also about uh, intuition. is a gift. Uh, it's, it's kind of a gifted knowledge. Uh, and, uh, but we do not know what kind of intuition they speak. But at least they use the term intuition. Yeah. Uh, of course, we have in Islam. Um, uh, knowledge, of course, source of knowledge other than uh, Quran and the Hadith, there is also in the form of ilham, and all these, of course, sources is the Quran. Yeah, and um, they speak about a number of soft skills, including the awareness of one's worldview, purpose of life, e uh, per, um, uh, awareness of ego, and awareness of ourselves. So this is a good. This is very good topic. This is very good. Um, uh, subject uh, that that uh, particularly uh, when we want to train people uh, uh, in character building, yeah, and also the awareness of the universe, laws of divine shown in human conduct and association, yeah, not only in human behavior in in, in individual human conduct, but also how human. Uh, and the interaction between human beings and, uh, and in fact, between uh, other creatures uh, also. Yeah. So what I mean by secularized spirituality here is that this, as I told you last uh, or last two weeks, that there are at least two schools of thought in, in the West, that uh, one school of thought that believes religiosity uh, it is important uh, connected to spirituality, but a popular school of thought believe that there is nothing to do, re religiosity has nothing to do with uh, spirituality. So this group, um, people like uh, Emmons, people like Wogan, people like uh, Zohar and Ian uh, Marshall, uh, these are in, in uh, 2000 or, uh, or early uh, 20. 20th century, yeah, they, they have, uh, they, they involved in this field, I mean, much, much, uh, I mean, many, uh, much earlier than, 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 than uh, people, um, uh, the Muslim themselves, yeah, so they, they have, they found that the spirituality not actually uh, got nothing to do uh, with religion, spirituality in this sense is spirituality that is total separation from uh, from uh, religion, yeah, or any uh, organized religion, yeah. So when they speak spirituality like this, they discover that um, a human effort in order to find purpose in life, to find uh, to find. Uh, uh, um, good values to find uh, a peace and happiness 
um, the growing uh, intellectual quest in human virtues and compassion shows superficially because when there is no foundation actually i mean when you are compassion you you have a lot of virtues noble characters but uh, without a religious without religion actually is it, it is uh, without foundation religious foundation in the case of islam religious foundation uh, tawhid and all this uh, so there is uh, uh, it's a different different uh, concept altogether so this they, they 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 are suffering from this you know it is like a superficial yeah and and in fact in fact they uh, they, they uh, this uh, spirituality for them is an effort to make an attempt to optimize or to optimize short-lived happiness yeah and to maximize financial profit making using spirituality that's why uh, research on spirituality and management and business and management is a very important topic in the west because they want to use spirituality in order to maximize uh, profit making yeah this is uh, of course because they leave their foundation is based on capitalism so maximize profit making is a very important uh, objective in in uh, or main foundation in capitalism so they 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 use uh, 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 capitalistic ideology uh, in in their approach in or, or they use uh, spiritual intelligence in uh, in in dealing with the uh, capitalism yeah. Uh, this is uh, among the criticism, of course, yeah, and uh, they support well uh, well being of society in general. Uh, to some extent, of course, these are good, these are positive, but the earlier two three points they are negative, yeah, and uh, spiritual spiritual intelligence of this kind or uh, spiritual capital has nothing to do with religion and or the theological belief system. And uh, spiritual spiritual intelligence enhance and further sustains economic interest. Yeah, for dunya, yeah, if we use uh, our Islamic language for dunya, for this worldly life, uh, spirit spiritual intelligence used to get uh, to get um, more money, to get uh, to get uh, more uh, wealth, to get uh, more profit. Yeah, so they use this. Yeah. So by do by so doing, they uh, uh, in fact deconstructing the very notion of religiosity. So this is what we call spiritualized, uh, uh, sorry, secularized spirituality. Now we come back, uh, we come to Islam, spiritual intelligence in Islam. Uh, the word intelligence, uh, spiritual intelligence itself is, uh, I do not have. Um, uh, 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 we when we compare between what uh, terminology is coming from the West and Islam, we always find there is uh, difficulty uh, to find uh, uh, the term uh, that is really correspondence to what we mean. Yeah. So, but at least we can bring uh, closer terminology so that uh, to understand what we mean actually when we speak about spiritual intelligence in Islam. Uh, in Islam uh, should be spiritual more than intelligence, but at least that's that's how to communicate. Yeah. Uh, the Quran, uh, of course, uh, the nature of Quran is self. Look at the themes of the Quran uh, that 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 are integrated. Uh, the nature of Quran is self capable of raising and dealing with fundamental questions of existence and creation. Uh, this is uh, uh, the theme of the Quran, dealing with. Uh, inner creation of men, feeling the inner creation of men, not only physical but uh, the soul, the roof, and the atul, all this. And the Quran itself is a model, modeling the very texture of human intention, morality, law, social networks. It's not only for individual but also for social network for muamala. Yeah. Spiritual intelligence from a semi perspective uh, developed with not only spiritual knowledge but also spiritual experience yeah uh, spiritual knowledge is not enough without spiritual experience that's why we have the uh, al-islam 
uh, the taslim, uh, which shows spiritual experience. Yeah? You experience Allah, uh, Ar-Rahman, Rahim. We got this from attribute names of Allah. So coming from uh, that, that leads to that God human experience uh, in relation to God. It represents the very result of human endeavor with relation to God. Not only to God, but from uh, to God, vertical, and then we go to horizontal, uh, which is relation to humanity and relation to the world. Yeah, so uh, this all included in the domain of spiritual intelligence in Islam with knowledge and spiritual experience. And spiritual intelligence, according to the Quran, refers to many station of uh, profound intrinsic state of faith and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ability to generate positive emotion, thought and action. Yeah. So this is so deep yeah, when we speak about spiritual intelligence as reflected in the Quran. Yeah. Yeah. Um, spiritual intelligence guided, supported, regulated and intertwined with iman, taqwa, morality or akhlaq and ihsan. Uh, so this is the blend of these three concepts or more than three concepts that shape Islamic uh, spiritual intelligence, yeah. Um, and, uh, and also, I would like to mention this, uh, one of the Muslim to inculcate, in, uh, we are talking about character building, Muslim to inculcate the divine values and characteristics in themselves. Uh, this is a popular term here, تَخَلَّقُوا We have, we have, when we speak about character building, uh, what is the model? So this is the, the term Takhallaku bi akhlaqillah We have to behave the way uh, With the akhlaq of Allah The behavior of Allah Yeah. For example, Allah uh, Explain his behavior his, uh, Through his attributes Name and mercy In the, in the, in the beginning of the Quran Bismillahirrahmanirrahim In the name of Allah The most merciful, the most benevolent yeah, So how to be merciful? Of course we cannot be God Merciful like God But at least to be merciful To be like human being yeah. This is one of the uh, elements of spiritual intelligence yeah. And then we have um, Spiritual consist, uh, co consciousness so Spiritual consist, consciousness uh, how to get spiritual consciousness to bridge divine and the mundane world through embodiment of the divine quality. So that's how they say how to live, how to live good in this world today. How to be good, in, to be good, to have good life, is to bridge the divine and mundane world through the embodiment of the divine quality. So that's why we say takhallaku bi akhlaqillah. What are the foundation of spiritual intelligence? The foundation of spiritual intelligence, of course, revelation. And then uh, the, the sirah, or the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because Prophet himself has been sent down to, to humanity, to mankind, to demonstrate practically throughout the life and uh, um, to guide us in life and uh, and not only that, we have also contribution of people of wisdom, scholars, and those who are grounded in knowledge and action uh, that they learn, they got wisdom through the Quran and Hadith, and it become guide uh, to Muslim uh, how to live in this world. Yeah. So people, um, uh, Quran, for example, uh, explain uh, spiritual intelligence, necessity and awareness of the boundaries and the horizons of spiritual experiences. A very important spiritual intelligence, not only based on knowledge, but based most importantly on spiritual experiences. Uh, experiences yeah. Spiritualism, uh, spirituality, spiritual intelligence is imbued in the process of continuous learning. Yeah, because concept of knowledge in Islam is extremely important for all level of society. Yeah, the Quran explains on the essence of human nature and details spiritual, uh, physical, behavioral, intellectual, physical constituent uh, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, this all related to the concept of fitrah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Quran explains human being is like integration or combination of, uh, is given by God, cognitive, physical tools, 
uh, like hearing, sight, feeling, and also there is internal uh, senses as well. And uh, these are intertwined. We cannot have only physical, we cannot have only spiritual, but they all intertwine. That reflects the unity of human essence. Yeah. And all of this, the gist or the essence or substance of human being is the heart. Heart is uh, taking special position for reasoning, understanding, while acting as center of faith and emotion. That's why we have uh, heart has different name. We have akal, we have uh, self, uh, soul, we have ruh. We have uh, kalp and all this here. And we have also terminology related to that, like fu'ad. Lub, for example, uh, refers to the deeper insight and perception. Fu'ad uh, refers to human uh, human emotion. Yeah. Uh, uh, a healthy or sound heart described uh, in the Quran as kalbun salim. Uh, to get kalb, uh, the status of kalbun salim, uh, Kalbun Salim produce healthy feelings, judgment, and lifestyle, and vice versa. Kalbun Salim will not will have to go through a lot of uh, great lot of uh, uh, training, tazkia, and so on and so forth uh, in order to reach that state. Yeah, that's why heart actually is the essence or substance of human being. Uh, heart occupies the center of human personality. Uh, of course, this is reflected in the hadith, uh, um, uh, in the hadith as mentioned in this. Uh, surely there is in the body a small piece of flesh. If it is good, the whole body is good. And if it is corrupted, the whole body is corrupted. And that is surely the heart. Allah wa hiyal qalb. Prophet Hub is the second foundation of uh, of emotional intelligence, uh, prophets. Uh, he is he he is not only admonisher but he's also bearer of glad tidings, bushra, and guide for humanity. And uh, prophet become prophetic teaching and role models provide a sustainable platform for spiritual discipline. And because uh, spirituality without the guidance of prophet, uh, you cannot uh, trust. You cannot take it because it can be. Uh, spirituality that guided by shaitan. Yeah. It's always happened. Uh, ev- many, uh, many, many shalatan uh, pretend to be the Sufis, but then actually they are guided by shaitan. Yeah. And also there is uh, there is hikmah, uh, a lot mentioned in the Quran as abundant good. Um, and and uh, the teaching of Prophet uh, was instructed to teach wisdom uh, alongside the scripture. So Prophet Sallallahu teaching the Quran and also bring the element of wisdom alongside the, the revelation itself. Yeah. So Quran you know, focus on uh, several areas here uh, related to spiritual intelligence. Yeah. Spiritual in relation to erasing sins, yeah, this is the area. Behavioral as the increase of good deeds in terms of cognitive uh, Quran uh, uh, encouraged to increase knowledge. Uh, this is uh, very important for spiritual intelligence. And also the Quran stress on social relation uh, uh, to, to, to make sure the safety, prosperity, protection, stability, and peace. So spiritual, uh, spiritual intelligence is uncovering all domain of life, actually. And another important key of spiritual is, uh, spiritual intelligence mentioned in Quran is about human capacity, about the effort, uh, about the invocation, about the, process, the the change, about the um, uh, relationship with Allah in terms of um, invocation, uh, correspond with the spirit of, of the divine law according to which Quran, uh, 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 to which God charge human being according to their respective capacities. This is mentioned in several places in the Quran. So spiritual intelligence and spiritual heart. Uh, of course, heart in Arabic term is al-qalb. The heart is deemed as to be master and key entity that regulate all sort of behavioral function and drives the entire course of personality 
a development both in positive and negative yeah so in sufi literature cult is is often uh, defined as divine subtle subtlety attached to physical organ yeah of the heart yeah so uh, and this uh, uh, the heart is spiritual a single spiritual substance but given uh, different uh, four different names at least that's why other al qalb we have atnafs we have al aql we have ruh yeah this four uh, name uh, other than uh, al qalb so why four names four names given to this spiritual entity because it has at least four function yeah what are indicators of spiritual intelligence in islam yeah uh, one must find uh, uh, in the quran mention the term ulul albab who are these people the, the these people ulul albab those who possess sound intellect and correct understanding who understand reason reflect over the meaning of things in their true nature and the quality of taqwa renders people of ulul albab to have pure and uncontaminated intellect the deep consciousness of the present and sovereignty of allah makes believers in constant control of his or her thought and action of behavior that would incur the displeasure uh, displeasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and other indicators of spiritual intelligence is people who have vision and purpose uh, these people are inheritors of paradise as mentioned in the quran those who purify their soul wealth and resources those who have strengthened their faith those who have a remembrance of allah these are indicators and those who make tawakkul to allah those who observe regular prayer and those who courage and has Uh, positivity in their attitude in their thinking and uh, those who are um this decency and uh, um and the uh, and uh, attitude of forgiveness yeah so uh, i will go quickly i have only few minutes left um okay Ah, uh, okay. Uh, all right. And, uh, oops, I think then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Okay. How to sustain spiritual intelligence? This should be the last one. Sustaining spiritual intelligence, of course, we have to follow Sharia. Uh, I mean, we have to have iman, Islam, sun, yeah, and uh, the process of tazkia, learning reason, uh, responses to divine tests, and developing discipline, and also, uh, of course, when you speak about Islam, we are, we are talking about ritual, uh, salat, fasting, uh, zakat, and and hajj, and uh, very importantly here, people at time undermine the role of zikir. remembrance of allah but zikr is not only with with uh, tongue but zikr can be with action can be with thought yeah and uh, self control is very important when we speak about spiritual intelligence this is the basics basic foundation of spiritual intelligence and those who are in the state of consciousness with, with allah can protect themselves from uh, from the influence of shaitan this is taqwa Taqwa is the key of men's defense. It strengthens men to avoid evil tendencies. Yeah, and taqwa develops self-awareness that involves observing oneself and recognizing one uh, feeling as they arise. Seeing the link between thoughts, very important feelings and reaction. Seeing the consequences of alternative choices. Recognizing one uh, strength and weaknesses, and seeing oneself in a positive but realistic. light in addition one also gain the ability to remain cognizant as feeling uh, of feeling as they occur those who have greater uh, certainty about their feeling are better pilot of their life and can cope with others as well we have the problem with us when we make mistake then we realize that mistake happened but people who have taqwa the mis- mistake not happen when they see something which is uh, going to be Uh, which is bad they have 
the awareness already. This is uh, the taqwa. So the quality of taqwa renders people of ulul alba to have pure and uncontaminated intellect, uh, the deep consciousness and of the presence and sovereignty of Allah, and makes believers in constant control of their thought, action, and um, and, and and behavior. Okay, the essence of taqwa. Taqwa it has two dimension, is an uh, external taqwa and internal taqwa. External taqwa is like uh, ritual prayers and all these uh, physical activities, fasting and all this. But taqwa, essence of taqwa, the uh, internal dimension of taqwa refers to the activities of the heart. Uh, this activity of the heart, which ultimately uh, ultimate goal of 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 this activity is to attain the knowledge of Allah. So we need this essence of taqwa in order to attain ma'rifatullah. What are the essence or what are the activities of the heart? Uh, as we mentioned here, we have we need to have uh, um, self-inducing good intention, ikhlas. Yeah? Uh, uh, of course, with sincerity of purpose and to be followed with action and to be truthfulness to oneself. And thus, the rational soul must watch over the, the animalistic soul, which is muraqaba, to ensure that the duties assigned to oneself, uh, oneself are carried out. Yeah. So, and we have also muhasaba. We can we only mention a few muhasaba to observe whether the Quran to uh, the, the to attain the knowledge of Allah pertaining to His creation, His reality and truth, has carried out these duties in prescribed way. Yeah. All this involves deep contemplation, kutafakur and zikir are two important concepts. They are a free form of ibadah, but the quality of this are very, very extremely important. Yeah. And uh, patience is another uh, key of uh, spiritual intelligence. Uh, without patience, we cannot speak about character building. And we cannot speak about self-discipline. Uh, it is sabar, patience is virtuous life based on self-control. And self-control necessitates self-awareness. And uh, self-awareness is the cornerstone of emotional and spiritual intelligence. Yeah. Uh, we have also gratitude. We have also uh, raja. Uh, raja means hope. Uh, we have also fear. We have also uh, Tawheed, the one unity. We have also Tawakkul. And the last one is love of Allah, Muhabbatullah. These are all high, high, uh, um, highest element of spiritual intelligence. Once we have this, inshallah, our relationship with Allah is getting uh, closer and closer. And, uh, and then uh, we'll bring, inshallah, peace in this world and the hereafter. Uh, with that, I, I will stop here. I would like to respond to the, uh, the questions. Uh, ask the question like. uh, okay. okay. So with this, I can, uh, if there is any question, then I should, <coughs> inshallah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, I think we go straight to the question. Uh, first one from okay. the Said, uh, from our brother uh -huh. from Sweden. They want to ask a live question. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Said. Uh -huh. uh, dear brother Ustad Shahran, thank you for your humble and inclusiveness. You're doing an amazing job. And uh, thank you to the IIT. Mashallah, we're blessed to be a part of this. Thank you so much, Professor. My, uh, my name is Professor Fatima. It was very interesting. My name is Saeed Jamaluddin. I am from Sweden studying psychology and psychotherapy and originally from Iran. And okay. uh, I work a lot in Sweden and particularly okay. in Scandinavia with the issue connecting to uh, promoting Islamic psychology. And okay. what I see is something that you mentioned, which is so important, which is the okay. spirituality industry and how okay. Western, okay. Now, I'm not judging people now because some people are doing it with a good intention. They're just not well aware. Okay. But a lot of the Western ideology is infiltrating, for instance, Buddhism. So they have done psychology from Buddhism, which has nothing to do with Buddhism. I'm not a Buddhist myself, but I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And this is a real problem. Yeah. And I see it all over Sweden. You can see it with the yoga industry. You can yeah. see, and they are doing it now with Sufism as well. 
So yeah. they're trying to do it with Islam, yes. which is very, very, very problematic. Mm, so my yes. question to you, Professor, thank you for mentioning this, is how can we get your help? And also Brother Shahran and all of other brothers and sisters in Malaysia and Indonesia, because what is happening now, I see some web pages on the net, it's called Sufi Psychology, and there is not Muslims doing it. Oh. They're not Muslim. They don't have the tawhid. They don't have the things. Mm -hmm. And I also studied um, CFT, Compassionate Focus Therapy, which is an mm -hmm. interesting therapy me method. And they have put some, mostly from Buddhism, because you know that in, in West, they, they, they don't see uh, Buddhism as a threat. They say Islam as a threat. So they don't want to yeah. actually understand Islam. Yeah. And this is due yeah. to Orientalism and Exotism, yeah. which yeah. Edward Zaid uh, spoke about. But... Yeah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we don't have that issue. Like the Buddhists are, they need to fight even more in West if they want to continue yes. to have their religion intact. But yes. what shall we do, Professor, and how can we spread your knowledge regarding this? Thank you so much. I'm sorry if I had a long question. Thank you very much with your question. Uh, this great question, actually. And it is very important. You highlight, you uh, mentioned very, very uh, crucial issue, uh, particularly nowadays. First, I would like to uh, to speak about um, Islamic Psychology Association because you are asking for help. Yeah, uh, recently about I think last two years, Islamic Psychology Association just uh, established in the U.S. Uh, and the president of that uh, association is uh, Professor Malik Badri and his GPT is Dr. Abdullah Rosman. These two. And, and there is another professor in this, uh, in this uh, association. Uh, his name is Professor uh, Rashid uh, Skinner. Yeah. These three are the great, uh, great psych Muslim psychologists that can help you. Yeah. They established already uh, this association. Yeah. Uh, I think I can, uh, if, uh, if you, I can, we can communicate through email. Inshallah, I give, I have a lot of, uh, material to, to help uh, you in this year. Um, uh, that's about uh, one thing about Islamic psychology. So just imagine in America, they established Islamic Psychology Association. And now, and I know because I have few friends there, they, they already started teaching Islamic psychology. Uh, I, I forgot the name of the university, but uh, I, I have Two friends, uh, uh, when I was teaching in Turkey last, last year, in fact, uh, we met them last two years. We have conference psychology in Istanbul. So they came and they presented paper and they told us about the activity done in the US. It is very, it's a miracle to me. I mean, to establish Islamic Psychologists Association. Uh, that's one thing. And another uh, question uh, you asked is about the... Um, the um, influence of of uh, Buddhism in 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 uh, in psychology. Uh, uh, Daniel Goleman himself, uh, this is the writer of Emotional Intelligence. I think you, you, I'm sure you know him. You know he himself. He went to Tibet for many years, and then of course he has written Emotional Intelligence in nineteen uh, in 1995. And then, of course, to feel his, his, his uh, quench for spirituality, but he started with emotional intelligence, of course. So he went to study uh, uh, Buddhism uh, uh, teaching in Tibet. So they have written a lot of... Uh, so, but actually, it has nothing... Yeah, this, these are the group of people who actually uh, speak about emotional, psycho-spiritual, but nothing to do with religion. Yeah. Uh, not only Daniel Goldman, but uh, there are many others that Zohar, for example, speak uh, uh, that there is nothing to do, uh, I mean, more uh, spirituality and religiosity are two different things. Yeah. So for them, spirituality for them is spiritualism that it become an ideology that related to something transcendence. But this transcendence is not clear. Uh, they have uh, epistemological uh, sort of um, uh, problem. I mean, in Islam, we when we say this, we say we refer to our scripture. 
But in the case of of uh, of Western uh, uh, Western worldview, I mean, what are the foundation of this? You know? So the foundation that the most is they refer to, for example, they refer to the concept of brain and they explain this because it has something. Yeah, we do not say that is wrong. There's some of them there are truths in it. Yeah, but uh, but uh, because of lack of um, uh, 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 there is epistemological problem. Yeah, so we cannot uh, develop framework uh, uh, when. Uh, a proper framework when there is problem in epistemology, yeah. and uh, and whatever they have, they have um, uh, spirituality, uh, which on their own uh, definition, as I, I give uh, 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 in in one or two of my slides. Uh, so the definition is actually like. Uh, 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 there is no solid uh, or not defended you know, uh, epistemologically. And also, um, but I do not deny there are some truths in it and there are a lot of uh, uh, good things in, 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 uh, brought uh, by the spiritual intelligence. Yeah? For example, when it comes to interpersonal relationship, about empathy, about uh, helping people, about, um, uh, about forgiveness, uh, about there are so many uh, resilience yeah but if we go in uh, deeper and deeper to study concept of forgiveness for example i used to watch uh, mo uh, uh, document uh, film on doctors program very interesting program in that program there was uh, um, uh, there was a lady she was uh, burned by her husband and then they brought her to, to be interviewed in the uh, uh, studio. And then they asked, they asked her, do you forgive your husband? She said, yes, I forgive my husband. Just imagine. Your forgiveness, because now, of course, you know much better than me about uh, very important in positive psychology to do, forgiveness element. Forgiveness understood by, by, by uh, this uh, school of thought, I say, is is because they know psychologically when you forgive you forget this is like you know general universal principle but when you come to islam when you speak of forgiveness look at the name of allah al ghaffar al ghafur uh, and not only that al shakur related to al ghaffar and al ghafur how do you explain that how do you explain that and how do you compare that there is no comparison whatsoever but but at least uh, I, I feel positive in this sense because at least these people from being stunned, uh, materialistic, um, uh, uh, ignos, agnostic, they, they try to move a little bit, to go to try to appreciate spirituality. But still their spirituality is still in the darkness. That's why when you bring the concept of spirituality in Islam, we have to improvise. We have to sort of replace we have better alternative so though we use the term uh, emotion intelligence we have to support with it from the quranic foundation from the hadith foundation from the practice of rasulullah from the contribution of our great muslim scholars of the past like imam uh, imam al-ghazali al al uh, ibn al-qayyim uh, even al-balkhi he though he uh, he's, uh, he's a real, uh, a real uh, psychiatrist, I, I would say, and uh, many others. Yeah. So we just try to through, try to diagnose and we examine, and then we come to our conclusion. Yeah. So uh, again, this um, uh, spirituality that proposed by or uh, or, or uh, propagated by secular humanists actually is very far away from Islam, yeah. like far between east and west. I shall say that here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 Uh, we take next one from Brother Nuruddin. Uh, how does the idea of spiritual intelligence in Islam respond to the problem of hope, risk, and uncertainty, which are commonly discussed in secularized Western spirituality? Mm -hmm. 
okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I should have mentioned in the in the earlier uh, uh, in the in the first lecture of mine, but I, I forgot to mention this. The uh, Islamic spirituality, or whatever we call it, ihsan or tasawwuf, or even spiritual intelligence, they are of the of the same kind or similar. I say the main contribution is to the mental health. I was, I have to say that the main contribution to mental health. There are so many research done today about the usefulness of of the uh, spiritual aspect in treating problem, uh, whatever problem, depression, mental health in general. Yeah. There are so many research, not only in mental, in mental health, the significance of a spirituality, but also in management. In management, that's why they, they consider, that's why they like to deal with the issue of spirituality because they find it's so useful when you are spiritually, uh, you are, uh, you are you have all positive quality in yourself so definitely you are you you have very good personality very good character you deal with people in a nice manner you bring peace you bring uh, you love you are loving people you are you know simple language you can say so this this uh, this uh, um, uh, not only uh, not only muslim world believe this but western world also Proof with research. Uh, that's why I, I said positive psychology. Uh, I have done a lot in this uh, relationship between correlation between uh, mental health and uh, spirituality and mental health. Yeah. So one of the problem you mentioned is I consider is the mental health problem. Yeah. Whether depression or loneliness and all these mental health issues today. Yeah. Yeah. I hope. Uh, okay. Okay. Now the big question is. Can you share a bit more on spiritual experiences? <laughs> oh yeah, spiritual. At the end of my of my lecture, uh, at the at the end of the slides, I, I mentioned the aspect of taqwa. Taqwa is very uh, is cornerstone of um, of uh, spiritual intelligence. So, uh, taqwa has dual dimension. Uh, external dimension and internal dimension. Yeah. External dimension like ibadah, rituals, obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, in 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 practicing and following the command of Allah, perform prayer, and all these are uh, rukun Islam, rukun, uh, yeah, rukun iman, and all this. But there is another dimension of taqwa, very very important internal dimension of taqwa, which is basically. Uh, 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 concept of um, ikhlas very important. Uh, concept of ikhlas is the foundation of relation, the core, uh, re, uh, re, uh, the core of uh, the relationship between human being and the creator. Ikhlas. So when there is ikhlas, of course, uh, the, the 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 other negative like riya takabur should be diminished when we have ikhlas, real ikhlas. Single purpose. Uh, this is very important. This is uh, 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 spiritual experience. This ikhlas. We cannot say that. Oh, I do this. I'm very ikhlas to do this. When the moment you say it, I think it's very difficult. <laughs> yeah. So because you cannot say this experiential uh, uh, um, uh, uh, spiritual experience. Yeah, and uh, patient. Of course, when you speak about patient, you cannot speak in uh, one lecture. Cannot finish. Actually, discussing about patient, uh, just like uh, Ibn Qayyim Al Jauzi mentioned, uh, in, there are different different category of patient. Patient, but uh, do you have you uh, experienced patient uh, uh, in the the shocking manner, in the, the in the the most shocking state you are composed? Uh, this is uh, experience. Uh, I'm sure some of you experienced this. Yeah. Um, but at time people speak about patient, be patient, be patient. But then I, I have a, I have a, a very I have a nice joke in this issue of experience of patient. Yeah, one ustaza she speak about patient. She teach patient to her, her her students in the class. He's a in the school, yeah, religious school. She said you have to be patient like this. 
you have to be patient. So long talk, preaching on patient. And then there is, uh, uh, in the past, there is uh, telegram, you know, the postman came with telegram. In this, in this telegram is written, uh, 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 your husband died, uh, uh, you know, a message. And then she said, oh, and she shouted in, in the class. Uh, so this is the example of the opposite of uh, speaking about patient, but she's not patient. <laughs> But this is an example is only for uh, for school uh, children, yeah. But I think uh, I'm sure you yourself you must have experience, uh, spiritual experience, a uh, tawakul, for example, another uh, another spiritual experience which is very very uh, crucial because without tawakul, without living things to Allah, how can we how can we attain happiness in this world? And the hereafter, yeah. In order to be happy in this world, we have to leave everything to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. After struggling very, very hard, after following the cause, the effect, knowing all this uh, Sunnatullah, and then the last thing we leave things to Allah. You, you just, uh, particularly in sujud, people just let it go, let it go. So then you feel very light on your neck. You feel very psychology, psychologically, you leave things to Allah. Alas, you are, inshallah, he is one of the experience. I don't have much experience, spiritual experience, um, but maybe uh, most of you here, uh, each of you experience, I'm sure, the, the people uh, can, uh, some people experience this, yeah, based on their own uh, 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 ability uh, and knowledge. Yeah. Okay, bro. We have uh, Dr. Bibi with us. Uh, we invite her to shed uh, some light on uh, counseling and psychology. Okay, Kak Bibi? Okay, thank you, Brother Sharon. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, th Professor, thank you very much for the very insightful and great sharing on intelligence and spirituality. Um, just want to... Um, acknowledge the point that you raised about commercialization of spirituality. I think that's really real, yeah. uh, including in yeah. our own community in the Nusantara area here. Things become so yeah. ambiguous now. I mean, people are, the, 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 the line between da'wah and, and commercialization of spirituality now become less clear now. And even uh, we're yeah. talking about in the area of healing and everything else from healing yeah. to parenting to Islamic mindfulness, you name it. Now people are just yeah. going into that. That's one area that I think you have addressed very well. Now, the other thing that I like, uh, I like about you, you really operationalize the definition of spiritual intelligence. I, I think the idea mm -hmm. of uh, internal, external, intrinsic, extrinsic, mm -hmm. I think these are very critical because mm -hmm. we have to ensure the... I think a lot of us know about the religiosity because there's a world revivalism of religiosity yeah. across across the globe, you know, regardless of whatever yeah. religion... So because of that, now spirituality now is like um, the thing, especially mm -hmm. with the COVID pandemic now, everybody rushed to their own uh, faith. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my question is, um, mm -hmm. in this area, how do we actually um, manage you know, our own uh, spirituality to ensure that uh, we are very congruent? You know, Because uh, people sometimes make a dichotomy between religiosity, physical rituals, and, and the, 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 the one that you mentioned about the internal aspect. So I think mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed. Otherwise, this idea of munafik, you know, um, this yes, idea yes. of we are not really uh, we we are very rhetoric. What we say didn't go with what we do. Uh, something. Yeah, yeah. This is the issue. Yeah, this is the issue. Yeah, uh, really. You are actually uh, you already answer uh, part of or most of your <laughs> questions. But I, I just would like to add, uh, as you mentioned also just now. Uh, Islam is a religion that uh, the spiritual intelligence in Islam is the combination or is a blend of Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Yeah. It's not only uh, uh, you pray, but your level uh, spiritual, uh, uh, when you pray, for example, we pray uh, Jama'ah, for example. I take this very simple concept. In Salat Jama'ah, I mean, we are encouraged to pray Jama'ah, yeah. But we, most, some of us, we don't even understand. Very literal uh, 
meaning. These I do not blame people, but I would uh, I think the, the the mistake done by the methodology of teaching of Islam uh, in this country or in other part of the world very uh, literal uh, approach about Islam. Yeah. Uh, that's why you find uh, the split uh, kind of you know you pray. But you do not understand the concept of prayer. Concept of prayer for character building. Yeah. For example, uh, uh, prayer jamaah. For example, why Islam encourage this? Because of, of uh, because of society, the importance of relationship, connectivity between people. Uh, but in prayer, you will see people, for example, really focus on the way you whether your hair or you have one hair coming out from your scalp. Oh, this as if you are committing racism. Uh, you have to be very close to each other. You, have, you know, things like this. So much over focus on this. But the impact of um, Jamaah itself, they don't even understand. Why they don't understand? Because there is no talk or, or lack of explanation on this issue. So I'm, I'm giving you only one example that show how people are confused about the, the teaching of Islam and you will re produce. Uh, uh, education, uh, our religious education, produce people who are who are just uh, seeing Islam as a ritual, but not so much on uh, on on the social aspect that that is more actually emphasis uh, Islam em emphasize more on 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 the social relation. But uh, but what is happening is is the other way around because of the methodology of teaching and because of the personality of those who are teaching and because of the sickness of the soul. There is a problem here, sickness of the soul. Uh, when you commercialize spirituality, of course there is a problem with the uh, sickness of the soul because you want, you love this dunya, you love, we do not say that this world is bad, but if you love dunya so much, you, you are you are afflicted with the disease with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that alwahan. Alwahan means love of dunya too much. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with loving dunya, but if you go extremely or you love dunya so much, you go extreme, then you have problem. Then people tend to sell religion. People tend to commercialize spirituality teaching, talking about Islam in television, in this, and asking a lot of money. This, is, this kind of behavior, people have not ashamed doing that. And it happened, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in Malaysia, in other parts of the world, and arrogance and all this. This is all sickness of the heart. We need to be treated. That's why spirituality, spiritual issue is very, very important to save humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm, Thank you so yeah. much, Prof. <laughs> Prof, can you give us preview for next week, Prof? Next week's class before we uh -huh. close. Uh. Yes. Next week, inshallah, uh, my lecture will be on uh, Al Imam Al Ghazali's okay. approach in 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 uh, correcting or character building or character refinement of uh, character. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, we like yeah wisdom of Al Ghazali, inshallah, yeah, in the light of spiritual intelligence as well, yeah, inshallah. Thank yeah. you, thank you so much, bro. We have yes, two uh, more from Brother Nuruddin and Sister Sima. Uh, I'll forward uh, to you for next week. <laughs> okay, okay, mashallah. So many okay. questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bro. Okay. See you next week, same time, same day, inshallah. Thank you, inshallah. everyone. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi taala.